So he got it right. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 34. Come on, hear somebody. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 24. The Messiah himself bore our sins in his body on the timber, on the pole. So that we haven't died to sin. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. If we say it, that means we have died to sin. Yes, yes, sir. That's what it is? Yes, sir. That's what it says. Hmm. So that we might live unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. yes, righteousness. Whose righteousness? His. So how do we find out what his righteousness is? Mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Torah. Is his righteousness. Yes, sir. Did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. The Torah is his righteousness. Brother, what is Torah? Torah is the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Torah. In that first five books, you find out what's right when you find out what's wrong. And most people don't want to read that these days. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Everybody. See, I can't say that his righteousness is a spirit. Because everybody thinks they got the spirit. Even in the Baptist church, in the Catholic church, everybody got the spirit. That's why I'm telling you, you got to know what his righteousness entails, and his righteousness entails what he said is right. If he said it's right, that's what's righteousness about him. So I got to adopt that righteousness as a part of me, and I got to live according to that righteousness if I'm going to live a righteous life. Hallelujah. Everybody got that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. It says in there, if anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Totally made over again. The old things have passed away. And everything become new. You ever heard the old folks say, I looked at my hands. Yeah, I know what they mean. And my hand looked new. It, looked, it was new. I looked at my feet and they were too. I had a new walk. Now, you can get clean hands and clean feet, but your mind can still be messed up. See, that's what the Father wants. The Father is not concerned about your feet. He's not concerned about your hands, your eyes, none of that. He said, it's better for you to cut off one of your hands and go into the kingdom main. See, because he don't need your hands and your feet and your none of that. What he needs is your mind. Because that's where he's going to entreat you. Yes. In your mind. I didn't see your brain. Uh -huh. Your mind. Your spirit. And once he gets you there, your body will follow suit. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he got to get your mind first. Yeah. And what that man said, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. Wasting it on junk. Romans 6.3. For those of you who want me to sit down, I'll be sitting down in a few more verses. Thank you, Brother Armin. I really appreciate you, my brother. Uh, yeah. Romans 6, verse number 3. Do you not know that as many of us that were immersed in the Messiah were immersed into his death? Yeah, yeah. See, I explained that to people as I take them down to the water. I am putting you down in this water to bury you because you died. And when I raise you up, you're going to be a new person. Hallelujah. I went down in the water as Isaac, and I came up as Yisak. Yisak ben Yahweh. What does that mean? Isaac, son of Almighty Yah. So my character, my ways, my thoughts, everything started changing. And it's still changing. I, I'm going to tell you like Paul said, I haven't apprehended it yet. It has apprehended me. And it's transforming me into it. Everybody understand that? I'm not making myself the way I am today. I'm allowing him to construct me. 
I came out of destruction into construction. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm letting him have his way with me to make me into a vessel fit for his use. Yes. Everybody got that? So we got to walk in the newness of life. Praise Almighty God. Well, the Father told me to do something here, so y'all bear with me. Everybody still with me? Yeah. I got to ask that question every now and then. Y'all get quiet, Brother DJ said y'all be faithful. Uh -huh. <laughs> that sounds like thunder. I'm going to tell y'all something. Last night, I spoke a word about the Almighty. Brother Jerry know what I'm talking about. And it sounded like a vehicle passed in the street. But it didn't sound ordinary. Right after I said that word, it came through here. It was a mighty wind. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about wind enough that we can hear it in here. As if we were out there. I just spoke a word and you heard the thunder. Don't take it lightly. This is serious stuff we're talking about today. Yeah. It's talking about our salvation. Mm -hmm. This is nothing to play with. No I told y'all, we don't go to church no more. We come to hear a word from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Going to church is just, you know, dressing up, coming down, sitting down, putting the money in the box and all that. No, 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 we're not here for that. We're here to get a word from him so we can be saved. Yeah. That's what I want for me. Yeah. That's what I want for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, if you were immersed, you got immersed or baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. All right? We were therefore buried with him mm -hmm. through immersion into death that as the Messiah was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we should walk in the newness of life. Yeah. That's what he said, right? Yes, sir. We should walk in the newness of life. Thank you, Father. That's a mistake. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Oh, boy, the Father is so good. I have been impaled. Look what Paul said. I have been impaled with the Messiah and I no longer live. What did he say? I no longer live. But the Messiah lives in me. And that which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Almighty God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loved me enough to give himself for me and I gotta love him enough to give myself for him. Yes. Hallelujah. And once I give myself for him, then no longer I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The eyes dies. Mm -hmm. And all I think I speak about is he. He. Because he's the one who's living in me. Yeah. Right. Ephesians 4 22. Ephesians 4 22. Now watch this now, because I want you to get the clear understanding, because so many people, and I wish this just is, is, is really pushed all over the internet, because there's too many people think they can live in sin and still be saved. And I want, you to, I want you to get a clear picture today that if you got sin in your life, you are not going into the kingdom. Because darkness cannot inherit light, and light cannot dwell in darkness. Everybody heard that? If I send somebody, if I just had a, a one a one switch building, I'm gonna have to talk to Brother Arnold about that. Just get get everything in this room right here on one switch. When you pop that switch, boom, everything come on. I'll show you more than I can tell you. That when you pull the switch of light, turn it on, darkness quickly comes. And by the same token, if I flip the switch on, darkness. It's a fast thing. It don't take all night for you to change. If you want to change, you can change today. That's why he said today is your day of salvation. You can get it today. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Nobody is promised tomorrow. We don't know. 
we going to see tomorrow and night. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we need to make it right with him now. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we we get on that highway out there, that wet highway, where, where it got some people who belong in the insane asylum and got drum drives. <laughs> we need to be prayed up. Yeah. When we get on that highway. Everybody got that? Yeah. Where I told you to go? Goodness and mercy, Father. 4.22. Put off with regard to your former behavior. In other words, you got to get rid of that. Put off the old man. Why? It's corrupted according to the desires of deceit. In other words, we were deceived. And there still might be some dece deception in you right now. It might be something in you right now that's deceiving you and make you think it's okay for it to be in you like that. Mm. But if it's not in accord to the Father, got to go. then it's the wrong thing in you that you call it right. Mm. The Father is not pleased with that. No, and the Father is determined to change us. Yeah. I mean, He is determined. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Uh, watch this. We got to put on. We took something off, right? Yeah. So we got to put something on. Yeah. We got to put on the renewed man, which was created according to the Almighty, in righteousness and set apart as of the truth. So we got to put on a new man now. A man that's been renewed from the old to the new. Because now we've been created according to Almighty Yah. That's recreation, right? So he took you from what you were to make you into what you are. He wants you to be as he is. Just like him. What father don't want his sons and daughters to be like him? And very upset with you if you claiming to be his son and you're doing something he told you not to do. You think you've been chastised. You go and try it after you say you're his son. See what he got for you. Matthew 19. Verse number 16. Matthew 19. Verse number 16. This is what he says. And see, one came and said to him, I just told you about him. Good master, what good shall I do to have eternal life? He said to him, why do you call me good? No one is ex good except one, my Father in heaven. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Why is the commandment so prevalent in our conversations? Why? Well, everybody be popping like popcorn on that one. Mm -hmm. The commandments is a part of Torah. Mm -hmm. Commandments are instructions to us of how to live. Mm -hmm. Number one, the first four commandments teach us.